I'm sorry. Is this Jeffrey? Bjorn lets a stranger at the hotel take the chair, even though it's his daughter's. Bjorn, his wife and daughter are a Danish family who came to Italy for a holiday. The stranger's name is Patrick and he's the head of the Dutch family, who are staying in the same hotel. Asking for the chair, which obviously looked taken, was the first attempt from Patrick to test Bjorn's boundaries. Bjorn and Luisa are getting ready to go to dinner, and they leave their daughter with a babysitter who can barely speak English and struggles to understand what they're saying. And please don't give her any apple juice before bedtime. Apple juice, yes, yes, like the other night. Yeah, but no apple juice. On their way, they make fun of the couple they met on this holiday. <laughs> they think they're so boring inviting them to a cooking class. Looking for something extraordinary then, guys? Well, wait for it, it's coming right your way. Patrick, the Dutch guy, makes a speech. Doesn't matter what he says, he does it just to make another appearance so that they would remember his face. He's trying to become less of a stranger, more of a familiar face. The fact that Patrick is not shy to speak in public attracts Bjorn. Patrick seems to be so full of life, so confident. He's Bjorn's complete opposite, someone Bjorn would like to be, but he doesn't dare to. The music touches him, he's a very sensitive, delicate man, which is quite rare for a guy. Usually men are ashamed of their sensitivity and try to hide it, because people often make fun of it. Something tells me that Bjorn's job is very boring, and he didn't fulfill any of his dreams career-wise. Seeing him being so captivated by music, I assume it would have been a good idea for him to work in the artistic world. His wife, though, doesn't seem to be moved by the music at all. She's more preoccupied with taking pictures to later post on social media to prove to some online friends that she's having a great holiday. Bjorn, on the other hand, can be in the moment. He wants to be in the moment. He wants to do something interesting in his life. He feels that something is missing, that there's void inside him. Unconsciously, he's desperately trying to fill this void inside. At this point, anything would do. Then he catches Patrick's eye, he's looking right at him. And even though it's weird for another man to be looking at him, it still feels nice for Bjorn to be seen, because most of the time he feels invisible. Maybe Bjorn is thinking, oh, that guy feels the music as deeply as me, we've got something in common, maybe we can become friends and he'll tell me what to do to become more like him, become as confident and as happy as him. At first I thought maybe Bjorn is secretly gay, but as the film progressed I've realized that it's not really about sexuality, it's just about his needs as a human being. To be seen, to be understood, to be able to express his feelings. Later that night he lies awake in bed, probably thinking about his life and how he wants to do something different, to experience something more than what he does all the time, year after year. These thoughts often come to people when they go away on holiday, because you are far from home and there's a change of scenery, and it's so much easier to reflect on your life. He steps on the balcony to get some fresh air and there's Patrick again, looking at him and it feels really weird, so he quickly looks away, but still, so far they've connected three times already, on the beach, then listening to music, and now on the balcony. Plus, he made a cute speech over dinner, so Patrick is already on the back of Bjorn's mind. At least he stands out among other people they've met on holiday. The next day they take a walk around town and then stop to have some lunch. When their daughter realizes that she lost her toy bunny again and she starts crying. It's not the first time she lost it and Bjorn says with frustration. Which is not a bad thing to say, a natural thing to say really, but Luisa doesn't like his tone. A father can be tough and strict. It's a lot worse when he's soft and weak, unable to protect his family, but apparently Luisa prefers a weak man. 
Bjorn has nothing to do but go looking for his daughter's toy. Uh, uh, for kids? Uh, no. Okay. Well, ciao. Luckily, he finds it. But by the time he comes back, the precious bunny in his hands, his wife is already engaged in a conversation with the Dutch family. Louisa doesn't acknowledge what Bjorn did straight away, and Agnes, their daughter, simply takes the bunny from her dad without even saying, thank you, daddy, let alone giving him a hug or a kiss. This is quite strange, but it tells a lot about the role of the father in this family. He's not respected enough. The only person who notices what Bjorn just did is Patrick. He says, looking very impressed by Bjorn. You went to find the rabbit? Very heroic of you. And we can see clearly by Bjorn's reaction that he's not often complimented by his wife or daughter, and maybe even at his job he's never praised. That big, genuine smile on his face. He wasn't expecting any of that. He's used to having no praise. Of course, he's going to remember the person who complimented him and feel good about him and even be looking forward to spend time with him. Time to shower Louisa with compliments, too. Wouldn't hurt. So, you're a vegetarian? Uh, yeah. That's so good. We could all learn from you. And she's beaming, too. Although it should be a bit uncomfortable when someone is so quick to give you compliments. And for what? For your eating preferences? In fact, you should be cautious of that person. It reminds me of the time when a sweet old lady once came up to me on the street and said, what a lovely puppy you have there. And I said, thank you. And then she quickly added, but you should have had a kid instead. <laughs> That second part was not nice at all. So yeah, I'd say definitely be cautious when people you barely know give you, or your dog for that matter, compliments. At least we have more in common with people from Holland than with the Swedish people. I'm this always comes in handy when there's nothing else to discuss. I'm so glad you say that. Yeah? Uniting by making fun of the third party when they are not there. Back at home, when they receive the invitation to spend the weekend in Dutch countryside, Louisa is pleasantly surprised by it, yet she clearly doesn't think they should go. Bjorn, on the other hand, is definitely into it. He's so hopeful about this. Louisa is not so eager, though. <laughs> Seconds later, she forgets all about it and starts talking about something she really cares about. New boots and a winter jacket for their daughter. Yeah. He says, uninterested, frustrated, she didn't want to go. Bjorn really wanted to go and meet Patrick because he gave him what he really wanted, some attention and a bit of praise. He can't bring himself to tell his wife about his feelings and explain why he wants to go so badly, because then he would have to tell her about the problems in their marriage and how he doesn't get enough attention from her, how he doesn't feel appreciated. Louisa might also be keeping something from him. She probably worries why they don't have sex as much as before. She feels undesirable to her husband and very insecure about that. She's focused solely on their daughter now, so that she doesn't have to think about what's going on between the two of them. Drinking wine, looking out the window, so misunderstood, in such need of human connection, while there's another human being right there, beside him, in the same room, who is also in need of his touch, his kind word. But she's always shopping on her phone, he thinks, feeling irritated. But this is just an excuse not to do anything. He hates that she's always on her phone, shopping or posting on Instagram, but he says nothing about it. He's kind of enjoying feeling bad, too. It's an old habit of his. Because what if he asks her to drop the phone and talk to him, and she says okay? What would they do then? 
they would have to actually speak. It's much more comfortable and familiar to feel sad, bitter, misunderstood, and sip his wine looking out the window and blame someone else for his problems instead of taking action himself. There's only half of him sitting there at their daughter's school concert, the physical part of him. Because his mind is not there at all, he's thinking, daydreaming, unintentionally planning his revenge on his wife. They invite friends over and we don't even hear their conversations. It's as if we're in Bjorn's head and he mutes it all because it's not interesting for him. He's stuck on the idea of visiting that family again. He even looks out the window, not paying much attention to his friend speaking. Hey, we have got an invitation from him when we met in Toscana in summer. So come on, please. We have flown a bit. We have flown two times. She says they've flown two times this year already. At first, I assumed she meant that it's expensive to fly. But then I thought she actually meant it's bad for the environment to fly so much. But did she really mean it? It seems she said it so that it would look like a solid excuse for not going to see those people. While the truth is, she simply doesn't want to go. And it's understandable, it's reasonable. They barely know them and it's still another country, different culture. And to be in their house would mean to kind of depend on them, even if it's just for a couple of days. Plus, they will have to travel with a child and she will get tired and etc etc. So there's nothing wrong with not wanting to do that. But saying she just doesn't want to do something is not an option for Louisa. She just can't say that. Uttering these words is out of the question because she doesn't let herself be who she really is. She wants to keep up the image of a very polite, friendly person who cares about the environment. But what is wrong in saying you just don't want to do something? That you just don't feel like it? Because she fears to appear real to her friends. She's scared that they would think she's lazy or rude or not sociable enough. Or she's scared or whatever. She's willing to spend eight hours driving to spend the weekend with people she doesn't want to see but not say how she really feels in front of her friends? Isn't this nuts? It is. But I can actually relate so much to Louisa. Truth is, these people they are dining with, if they don't accept Louisa for who she is, then even better, they shouldn't be friends with her. Yet, she doesn't even try to be real and honest in front of them. Hiding behind her vegetarianism, exquisite meals she made for this evening, hiding behind being environmentally friendly. Who knows, perhaps they would all laugh at that and agree with her if she was honest with them. And I especially hate her husband because he's using this trait of hers that he knows about for his own benefit. The truth is, we don't have to explain why. We just don't want, and that's it. And this is what I personally struggle with. I can't help but explain myself all the time. I don't have to. And I'm really grateful for this film because it serves as a great lesson for me to work on quote-unquote my say no muscle. Bjorn pulls this trick at dinner with their friends. He knows his wife would have to agree under the pressure of her guests, especially when she hears her friends say, it would have been rude to reject. She's a people pleaser to everyone, except for her husband, it seems. Yeah. Of course she wouldn't want to make these strangers feel rejected, wouldn't she? Because that would be just so cruel. So she reluctantly says, Yeah, they get a good fear. We can tell that she really doesn't want to do it. Her body language says it all, but she refuses to listen to her instincts. When she was talking to her husband earlier, she let him know how she felt about the invitation from the Dutch family, 
and then just quickly went back to whatever she was doing before. She didn't think about it twice. Yet, when there are friends there, the way she behaves is different. She tries to explain herself, to justify herself. But then again, are they really her friends if she can't be herself around them? If you want to say no, you should be able to resist the impulse to accept whatever is being offered to you, to stay strong and firm when other people are trying to convince you. And in this case, her friends aren't even applying pressure to convince her. They are just talking, having a conversation, sharing their experience. And of course, my favorite argument. <laughs> the worst that can happen. <laughs> well, anything. Whatever you do, whenever you go, if your heart is not in it, something bad can happen to you. For real. <laughs>